X15 is for statics and elasticity. So let us consider the equilibrium of a composite system. There is a stick and these are string and there is a mass, there is a hinge and the string is attached to a wall. In order to find out the equilibrium condition, what we have to do is the sum of forces applied to an object is a zero. And sum of all of the torques applied to the same object is a zero. This is the condition. Let us solve this problem in practice. This capital M is here. There is a stick and it has its own mass. So gravitational force is applied. And to simplify our analysis, we have chosen a uniform stick. Then the center of mass is at the center. So when we compute the force or torque, we have to consider the force applied to a rigid body is applied to the center of mass. Okay, so this is a central point of the stick. The string of negligible mass, so we do not consider the mass of the strings, that just uh, these strings transmit forces. The width W, this is W, this is a width, and the height, this is a height. The triangle determines the angle theta as, so tangent theta. This is tangent, H over W is tangent, okay. Or set. We must cancel the sum of the friction. What is the friction? Hinge. Uh, if a string is attached to a wall, the string does apply force only along the direction of its own. In case a stick is fixed to a hinge, hinge can apply the normal force as well as the frictional force, either direction depending on the situation. In here, we have this string. Just consider the word string and there's a hinge. Except that we have a weight of this stick and weight. So these two weights are summed. There is a force, gravitational force apply the whole system. But it is in equilibrium. Therefore, it must be canceled by other forces. But we find there is a force. This tension does apply along the normal direction only. It, there is no way to sustain the gravitation. This is possible only if this frictional force is going upward that is opposite to the gravitational force. So this <clears throat> Among this, the, this, this contains the sustaining force to sustain this Mg and this capital Mg too. But as far as Mg, small Mg is concerned, this should be canceled by this force. The force of the stick applied by the red string, red string, this string. Okay, just consider this part only. This mg accept the gravitational force, and there is another force that is a string. This string has tension, T2. It must be canceled. So T2 is opposite to mg. So minus mg is the tension of this red string. Tension T1, 
this is T1, of the green string must cancel the normal force of the wall. And here, tension is applied to here. So to, to this system, tension is applied to the right direction. To the, this system, tension is applied to the left. So tension, when, when we consider the tension, we have to decide the direction depending on the situation. It is, it is just always a transmit the force that has action reaction pair. That's the reason why sometimes it is heading to the right, sometimes heading to the left, depending on the object that is applied. Gravitational force Mg does not apply any torque any going in the stick because the moment arm is a zero. Mg. Gravitational force Mg is applied to the center of mass and the, the torque on the stick. When we consider the torque on the stick relative to its center of mass, then there is a no torque because the torque is R cross F. And when we measure the R, that is a perpendicular distance from the center of mass, but this force is applied to the center of mass. This labor arm vanishes, it is zero for the center of mass. The same situation so I think you you can solve this problem by yourself just let me pass in the previous exam many students didn't understood under, didn't understand what hemispheric Hemisphere is a half of a sphere, hemisphere. Hemispherical shell of radius R and mass M. So the area is, area is a four pi R squared, just half of the two pi R squared. So uniform hemisphere. So density should be mass M divided by area, there's two pi. R square. The center of the full sphere, center of the full sphere is O, and A is the center of mass of the hemisphere. We'll find this A is uh, one half of radius. We, we can find it by uh, integration where n hat is the unit vector parallel to AO. Okay, AO. This is the normal vector. And then there is a force, the red one is a force applied to the center. If there is no force, this if we raise this one, what happens? Center mass is along this line, symmetry line, it must be on the left side from the original center. Therefore, that there is a torque. So it should rotate counterclockwise because the, the center of mass is on the left side of this uh, vertical line. So there is a torque. So it, it will fall down. So this it will rotate like that. In order to sustain this, we apply this capture F. This is the situation. We can slice the hemispherical surface into annular region, annular region, annular region, 
to find the, the center of mass. This is the step of computing the center of mass. We, this, this n hat is chosen as a z direction and we will choose the polar angle theta from the z axis. So we vary the angle in this way and you will find the annular region If we choose a theta to theta plus d theta, that is equivalent to cosine theta to cosine theta plus uh, d cosine theta. The mass is, you remember, how can I organize this calculation? This area is sine, sine theta, d theta, d phi r square. This is the area of this guy. And we, we can integrate this one from theta from right angle to pi, right? This is the axis. This is a right angle. And then this is a one half of pi and this angle becomes pi, right? Or area can be computed using the cosine theta, d phi. Here, phi is a modal angle that runs from zero to two pi. Here, we have a zero for the cosine theta. Cosine theta runs from zero, uh, not zero, from here from minus one to uh, zero. So, <clears throat> the M is, total mass is M, density is M over pi two, pi r squared and this is a total area and the differential area is r squared d cosine theta d phi so d phi can be integrated out this will give 2 pi and these 2 pi cancels m r squared r squared d cosine theta and r squared r squared cancel so we have this kind of form. The center mass of an annular region, center mass, let's compute center mass. Center of mass is the one over M integral coordinate and dM something like that. So we substitute this one. MM cancels and we have to find what X is and D cosine theta. What is X? That is our cosine theta because Let us uh, cut this one along this plane. Then we will find something like that. This is center. This is theta. And this is radius. And this coordinate is <coughs> our cosine theta. This R cosine theta, this coordinate is R cosine theta, and this is the origin. So what we have to do is replace this one as R cosine theta. And what should I do? MM cancels, 
and R is vectored out, vectored out, and this integral is something like from minus one to one x dx, uh, one to zero. Where why we stop at zero? It is a hemisphere from pi to zero, uh, the pi to half a pi. For at this point, cosine theta equals minus one. At this point, cosine theta equals zero. So if you carry out this calculation, the answer is this. Negative sign means it is a left-hand side on the left-hand side, and the exact point is just minus half of radius. So without integration, we cannot know where the center of mass of this hemispherical surface is. Now we know what the hemispheric surface uh, the, what the center of mass of this hemispherical surface is. Now, using this fact, we know, now we know this position is a half of radius. And if we choose a horizontal direction to be E1 direction, and this angle is the theta. Now theta is redefined, it is when we evaluate this integral, we measure angle theta from the n-axis. Now, we choose n hat that E1, that is E1 hat, that is a horizontal direction. This one is the theta in this problem. We know this position is uh, just backward from the center, original center of the whole hemisphere, uh, uh, whole sphere. It is just a half of R. Only the normal force capture N and the gravitational force MG have the components of the applied force along the E2. There is a gravitational force MG applied downward, so E2 hat minus MG. Okay, downward. And there is a normal force. There's a floor. There's a normal force. And must be applied on the bottom point, P. Because this additional force is a horizontal only, vertical components are only these two. And this is in an equilibrium. Therefore, the magnitude of the gravitational force and normal force must be the same and opposite. So normal force is found to be plus mg e2, or z. That is just a minus mg the whole one. That is the same. Only f and small f, what is small f, have non-vanishing components either parallel or anti-parallel to E1. Aha, there is, there is a force along the horizontal direction, and there is a no other force to cancel this force. Can you find it? The only way is the frictional force, static frictional force on the bottom that must cancel this external force capital F. Therefore, the sum must disappear. So using that contribution, you can go further, but let me stop here. It is enough to understand how we can achieve an equilibrium by computing the torque and force. Let us consider a case a rigid body is on a plane and there are multiple forces, multiple external forces that are all co-planet. on the same plane. 
means it is on the same xy plane and and head is always along the direction that is a perpendicular to that plane okay this one this system is in equilibrium in that case f1 through fn are linearly dependent because f1 fn are zero sum is zero linearly dependent and torque sure some of the torques should be zero because it's the system is in equilibrium uh -huh. for all k tau k is the same for any choice of axis of rotation no the sum is a zero that's a fine whatever axis whatever axis uh, we can introduce we may introduce the sum is always vanishing however specific axis of rotation will change the r cross f f doesn't change but r changes depending on the axis of rotation so each torque every torque may depend on the axis of rotation so we cannot we cannot choose for example with respect to this axis of rotation we compute the tau one with respect to this axis of rotation we compute we compute tau two that's wrong if i want to compute the torque every torque should be computed with re respect to a single axis of rotation that's a, that's quite important axis of rotation must be chosen as a single one when i compute the compute all torques associated with the, the four forces six from this until 17 we need to we we need to know what stress and strain and the ratio that is a uh, very important to study fluid mechanics until 17 okay and i believe uh, you can review what the uh, what the stress and strain when you read through x14 uh, because is a very simple idea let me pass this part you have to memorize what stress and what strain is and what is the bulk modulus or shear modulus that that is the ratio of stress and strain let's consider this problem we have uh, the same problem repeatedly so it is very important first this uh, purple stick is uh, sliding down sliding down to the ground but in this problem first of all let us consider the case it is in equilibrium. Uniform stick of a mass capital M and length L rests, rests. It is in equilibrium against a slippery vertical wall. No friction. Here, no friction. But it is a standing still. Therefore, there is friction. This part, this uh, horizontal plane has a friction. E1 and E2 are unit vectors. E2 half, 
and e1 hat is given in here. First of all, it is a uniform, uniform stick. The center of mass should be at the center. What is the coordinate? This is x, and this should be one half of x and x coordinate. This is end point is y, and this is zero. So the center point is one half of y. So one half of y, one half of x. So this is the center of mass. You could have made uh, integrated to find out the center of mass, but this, according to this uh, trivial problem, the center of mass is just at the center and coordinates are given like that. B, no more force. F subscript F means it is floor. There is a normal force on the floor. No friction, so the floor can apply the normal force only. And in here, this wall can apply the, because there is no friction. Normal force only. However, this, uh, there is a friction, the floor can apply the normal force and some frictional force. I think it should be something like on the to the left. Let's see. Floor applies normal force and E2 component of the force, this gravitational force, is uh, this one so gravitational force is cancelled by this normal force from the floor normal force of the war w means a war must cancel the frictional force f of the floor because the normal force can apply to the right direction only the frictional force must cancel and that must be the same in magnitude but opposite direction so friction there is a normal force on the floor frictional force on the floor and there is this horizontal force that is a normal force from the wall and there is a gravitational force gravitational force applied to the center of mass of the stick this is the whole applied forces one two three four forces because of the cancellation we have the constraint without the equilibrium condition for the net torque one cannot determine right there is an angle theta is uh, not equal to one half a pi theta equals one half a pi that means it is a standing still it is an unstable equilibrium state but as long as in this case stick is a stationary without the friction of the floor without friction of the floor it will slice it will slide down slide down so it isn't, this one is wrong. Next, let us consider the torque. I don't have to explain because everything is the same as the previous problem. Let us consider the torque. The torque due to the gravitational force that is applied to the center of mass and we need to choose the axis of rotation. If the axis of rotation is chosen at the center of mass, torque due to the gravitational force that applies to the CM at this one. So we substitute the center of mass. Is it right? Force R, R cross F r cross f center mass r 
one half of x e one hat, one half of y e two hat. That's fine. Torque due to the gravitational force that applies to center of mass. What is x? Hmm, there's a condition. Note that we compute the torques, compute the torques with the respect to the z-axis, with respect to the z-axis that is perpendicular to this plane, that is a passing the point P. Aha, uh -huh. P is here, passing the point P. So when we compute the torque, we, what we have to do is RP, subtract the RP, and take a cross product of F. What is RP? RP equals X, E1 hat. So R minus RP equals minus 1 half X, E1 hat, plus 1 half Y, E2 hat. So we have factored oh, one half of L minus cosine theta sine theta. So minus cosine theta and sine theta for the X and Y component. That's fine. And then we multiply the cross product, cross product with F that is the gravitational force mg minus e2 this is e2 hat gravitational force is downward so minus mg so we know e1 cross e2 equals e3 and e2 cross e2 equals zero so this one does not contribute and only this one contribute and minus minus becomes a plus copy L over two, mg and cosine theta. That's correct. The torque due to the normal force were applied to this point is, okay, we remember we are computing the torque with respect to the axis that is parallel to the z-axis and passing the point P. So we need to subtract R minus RP, something like that. And the point in here, R, equals Y E2 hat. And RP equals X E1 hat. So R minus RP equals Y, uh, sorry. X E1 hat, oh, minus X E1 hat plus Y E2 hat, right? And X, e, X equals L cosine and y equals l sine so y e2 l sine minus l cosine that's right and mw we do not know the magnitude we knew that mw cancels the friction mw cancels the friction with but we do not know what the magnitude of mw was so we just use NW and NW is a toward positive X axis. So E1 hat. So cross product, this one cancels. E2 cross E1 is minus minus E3. Okay, so we have negative sign. If you look at this figure, relative this point, 
relative this point, normal force is applied to this direction. So it is rotating clockwise. The sign, negative sign, means it is rotating clockwise. It is a negative. If it is rotating negative, uh, this uh, counterclockwise, the sign should be positive. So everything is correct until now. The torque due to the normal force and the frictional force of the floor is zero because the momentum is zero. Here, we have a normal force on the floor and frictional force on the floor. However, when I compute the torque, we have chosen of axis of rotation that is, that is passing through the point P. Whatever force may be applied to this point because the R minus RP is a zero at this point, there is no way to contribute to the torque. Therefore, it is a vanishing. It is a exactly zero. That's right. And the remaining piece is, oh, we have computed everything. We have the torque. This normal force contribute to the negative sense and this torque contribute to the positive sense. And these two must cancel each other. So we copy this result <coughs> in here and copy this result in here. We must find the exact cancellation of the two torques due to the gravitational force and due to the normal force from the wall. And immediately, what we find is one half mg cotangent theta is the normal force from the wall. Because it is normal force must cancel the frictional force of the floor, the frictional force must be the same in magnitude but opposite in direction. So it should be cotangent theta with negative sign is not tangent. 12, still we have the same problem. The motion, now we consider the motion. Motion is restricted to the xy plane. Find the fourth statement regarding the motion of the stick. Now, wall and floor, and there are no friction everywhere, no friction. So it will eventually slide down and touch the ground. So this is a dynamics problem. First, we knew the center of mass when angle theta is given here. Velocity of the center of mass we remember the stick length of stick is constant. It is zero. Because it will slide down, it won't be zero. And its acceleration won't be zero. The velocity of the center of mass is just time derivative of this. The same thing, cosine, cosine theta time derivative minus sine theta, theta dot. Sine theta's time derivative equals cosine theta, theta dot. So what I have done is replaced cosine with minus sine and multiply theta dot. Replace sine with cosine and multiply theta. Down. This is the center of mass velocity. Now, aha, what we have, according to what we have learned from rigid body dynamics, the kinetic energy should be expressed as a sum of translational kinetic energy with respect to uh, translational translational kinetic energy that 
is assumed to be the concentrated at the center of mass as a single point. And the rotational kinetic energy with respect to the center of mass, with respect to center of mass. Okay, because we know what the center of mass velocity is, we concentrate all the masses at the center of mass to find the find out the translational kinetic energy. One half m x dot cm squared. You know, this is a unit vector. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. This is a unit vector. So square of this is just one half L theta dot total square. So if we, if we expand, it is just a one eighth of M L square theta dot square. That is the translational kinetic energy. All of the masses, all of the mass contribution is concentrated at the center of mass. Plus, we need to compute the rotational kinetic energy with respect to the center of mass. Previously, we learned that ICM, ICM is one twelfth of ml squared. For example, if the axis of rotation is this, at the end, the point passing the end point, in that case, according to the parallel axis theorem, it was one third of ml squared. And this is a, in case the axis of rotation is passing the center of mass, it is a one twelfth of ml squared. So use this. And still, the angle of rotation, this angle of rotation should be the same as this same position, this angle, this angle, these two thetas are the same. So the angle of rotation about the center of mass should be the same as the theta. So angular velocity theta dot squared is multiplied to the one half ICM. Because it's 112, we have 124th of ML squared theta dot squared. Now we can compute the what the kinetic energy is. Next step is to consider the sum of translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy with respect to the center of mass. It was a one eighth and it was a one twelfth, twenty fourth. The sum of these two is a one sixth of ml squared, theta that squared. Now, we are ready to attack the real dynamic problem. This situation is uh, the gravitational force. The gravitational force has a gravitational potential energy. And because it is a conservative force, total mechanical energy must be conserved. The simplest case for the, the uh, is for the gravitational potential energy is to choose to choose the potential energy to be zero when it is flat, when theta equals to zero. In that case, center of mass is above this horizontal plane by L sine theta one half. So we have mg h height from the bottom. Now, the total kinetic energy of this rigid body and the potential energy, their sum is the total mechanical energy. And this sum must be a constant of motion due to the conservation of total mechanical energy. And I told you, Newton's law of motion is rather tricky to derive in this kind of problem. However, it is a very trivial to write down the energy conservation. By, by taking the derivative with respect to time, you will find 
the equation of motion directly from this energy conservation rule. If I take the derivative, one sixth ml squared and the chain rule, two theta dot and theta double dot plus mg half of L sine becomes cosine and theta dot and energy is a constant so equals a zero mm cancel and l squared l cancel so one six becomes a three theta dot theta dot cancels 2 is multiplied, so we have L, G, 3G over 2L, cosine theta. This is the equation of motion. Without this energy conservation, it is a very, very tricky to find out the equation of motion directly from the Newton's laws of motion. you will find the theta dot double dot is always negative except at the stage it is a vertically standing up the very unstable state however it is idea then it is standing still however whatever angle you may have it is a tilt it a little bit for example in this time so it will rotate in such a manner and when you rotate if the angle decreases the, the angular velocity is a negative sense that's the reason why we have negative sign of it again let's extend this one to go further <clears throat> we derive the equation of motion, but let us uh, recall this uh, total mechanical energy conservation. Suppose that this one, this one is constant, and suppose that at a certain angle, theta zero, for example, we have an initial state with the theta zero. And at that time, it was not rotating, standing still. You are, you are grabbing this uh, stick and slowly release the, this stick. Then from then on, it acquires the kinetic energy. So this is the total mechanical energy when it was uh, standing still with angle theta zero. I don't remove this term to the right side. In that case, we have this one six appears a three G over L sine theta zero subtracted by sine theta. You know, the sine theta equals one if theta equals half a pi. And from then on, Theta decreases, theta decreases. So it is always positive definite. When it reaches, when it reaches theta equals zero, we know sine theta, when theta equals zero, equals zero. So when it slides down and when it's arrived at the horizontal floor, the angular velocity, when just before it touches the ground, can be computed like that. Furthermore, when it reaches the flat stage, this point P 
is standing still. It cannot go further to the right. So at this point, it, it is just like a circular, uniform circular motion. Because this point is standing still when it reaches the ground, when theta equals zero. So because the length of the stick is L, the left end has the largest speed and is going down and it touches the ground and you will you hear a very big sound. Okay, 15. All right. These are for the linear equations and trigonometric formulas, what you learned in the high school. So I think that's enough today.